Welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit more about fractions today. So just a quick review. A proper fraction is one where the numerator is less than the denominator. So I don't have a complete whole piece. I have less than one. That is called a proper fraction. Now, if I have more than one or equal to one, if these two numbers are equal or if the numerator is bigger, that is referred to as an improper fraction. Now, if I am mixing whole numbers and proper fractions, I end up with something called a mixed number. So those are a few of the vocabulary terms that we're going to be reviewing today. I want to start off with just a very simple reminder. When we are comparing fractions, <clears throat> for example, if I have two unit fractions, one seventh and one fourth, even though the four is a smaller number, it's a bigger fraction because this means that it only takes four of these to make a whole, whereas it's going to take seven of these. So this number meaning bigger also is going to mean that there are more pieces. So although the four is a smaller number, it's a bigger fraction, and the seven is a bigger number, it's a smaller fraction. So whenever you are comparing unit fractions, you should be able to tell the general size by looking at the denominator. The bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. <coughs> now I can use these to start building some very interesting numbers out there. Again, if I have less than one, that's a proper fraction, one-fourth. And then I can start building more fractions. Here I have three-fourths, and so my fraction is a proper fraction, three-fourths. Now this one is pretty straightforward. I have three-fourths. But if I have more than that, I can start making whole numbers. So let's say instead of just three-fourths, <coughs> I have one, two, three, four, five. Now at this point, it's bigger than one whole. I now have an improper fraction. Sometimes I want to have all of the pieces be the same kind of unit fraction. But sometimes, you know, this is kind of, it's hard and I have to constantly be reorganized. Sometimes it's just easier if I have enough to make one whole, I'd rather just exchange it for one whole. This is much easier to work with because it's all basically like if you glued it together. Now, when I do this, I now have a mixture of whole number and unit fraction. And I would write this as one whole and one fourth. Both of these names are completely accurate for describing what we've built here. If I have a mixed number where I've mixed my whole pieces and unit fractions, it's a mixed number. And if I have all the same kind of unit fraction, but it's more than or equal to one, I have an improper fraction. So we're going to be practicing today, going back and forth, converting. <coughs> it's very common that you have to convert back and forth, depending on which kind you need for whatever task you're doing. There is no one that's better or worse than the other. You definitely want to know how to use both improper fractions and mixed numbers and be able to convert easily back and forth. Now, when we have something that starts out with all the same fraction pieces, this part is pretty easy. I am just dividing my pieces into groups. And just like regular division, 
when I am dividing my pieces into groups, I'm going to find out how many holes I can make. And then I will have a remainder in this case. And so I can see here, I've got enough to make one hole with two sevenths left over. So I can exchange and I now have one and two sevenths. <coughs> so one and two sevenths, I can also divide it right back down again to its improper fraction where I have seven sevenths plus two, that's going to be nine sevenths. When I took my pile of nine and I divided it, I literally said I have nine pieces. I want to see how many groups of seven I can make. Seven goes into nine one time. And once I subtracted away those seven, I was left with a remainder of two. I have two pieces left. So when I am doing a problem where I want to start with the improper fraction, I lost my sheet here. It's simply division. Let's say I had 48 fifths. Now that means when I have fifths, I need five of them to make one whole. So if I'm dividing it into groups of five, I'm simply going to do a division problem. <coughs> five will go into 48 nine times. Nine taken five times, I will use up 45 of those pieces. And after I subtract and take that away, I will have three pieces left. I will have three fifths of the way to the next whole number. Now, you should remember that I have been very particular about when we're doing division, I don't want you to put an R for your remainder. I've been asking you to make your remainders in fractions this whole time because now it's going to be very helpful for you. So as I am making my improper fractions into mixed numbers, again, if I have 73 over 10, that means that I would actually have 73 of these tenths pieces. I'm going to divide them into groups of 10 because it takes 10 tenths to make a whole. 73 divided by 10. Oh, well, <clears throat> I'm going to be able to make seven whole pieces. Seven times 10 is 70. And once I subtract away all of those pieces that will make holes, I will have three pieces left over. I will have three tenths left over. So I would have two, three, four, five, six, seven whole number all together. And then I would end up with three tenths all by themselves. Oh. A ninth snuck into the wrong part of the box. Now you can see here where changing this into a mixed number would make it a lot easier for me to work with because I can separate out all of these that can be exchanged for whole numbers. And then I can very easily see how much I have left on my way to the next. I'm three tenths of the way to my next whole number. So again, going from improper fractions to mixed numbers is simply a division problem. Now when you go the other direction and I start with a whole number and a couple of the unit fractions, right here I have one and two sevenths, the example that we had earlier. I'm going to do an exchange just like I was doing a moment ago only instead of putting them all together, I'm going to cut them into lots of little parts. They're going to multiply. And I'm going to multiply this. I need to have sevens. And I know that seven sevenths will make one whole. So I am simply going to exchange that for one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. <coughs> oh, I got another tenth in there. Oh, my fractions are misbehaving today and trying to come out when they are not supposed to. I think they miss all of you and would really rather more people were working with them than just me demonstrating. The materials are sad without us. <laughs> now, I exchanged, and I was able to get 7 sevenths plus the 2 that remains. So I multiplied this, and then I added the remaining 2 pieces. So 7 times 1 is 7, I had 7 sevenths plus I had 2 remaining, 2 sevenths equals altogether 9 sevenths. Now from here, I can start to see the pattern of how this is going to happen every time. And math relies on patterns. We love patterns and the predictability of it. Every single time I have a whole number, I know that I'm going to multiply it by whatever the denominator is. So in this case, <coughs> I knew that I was going to get 7 out of that whole number. If I was going to exchange and I had a whole number and I wanted to turn it into eighths, I would end up with 8 eighths. So all I have to do is multiply this by 8 and I'll know how many pieces I can get. 1 times 8 is pretty easy. It's just 8. But let's say I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of these, and I want to know how many eighths I can get. Well, I can imagine 6 of these each one of them is going to give me eight pieces. I could count it up. Eight, sixteen, twenty. Oh, it's, it's multiplication. Six times eight equals six times eight. Did I get 48? I hope so. 48 eighths. If I multiply these out, where I get 8 times for each one whole, I'm going to end up with a total of 48 eighths. Now, the more you practice these, the easier it will become. So we're going to do a couple just practice ones going through this routine again. So if I have <coughs> 21 sixths, I would simply divide that out. 21 sixths. Remember, these are both showing division. Even though this is written in a fraction format, they mean the exact same thing. I have 21 and I'm dividing it into groups of six. Six is going to go into here three times. Three taken six times, I will have 18 pieces used up. Once I subtract, I will have three pieces left over. I will have three sixths. Sorry, that got a little hard to see up there. Three wholes and three sixths. If we have 40 fourths, 40 fourths, I'm going to there one time, but I'm in the tens place, so I need to remember, keep my zero in there. Oh, that's really easy, right? It's just 10. I didn't even have any remaining pieces left over. We're going to do one more. Oops, sorry. I meant to do six there. So 36 divided by 5. It's going to go in there seven times. Seven taken five times is 35. When I subtract all those pieces away, I will have one lonely fifth left. One fifth. So 36 fifths can be regrouped into 7 and 1 fifth. You'll notice that I always write the whole numbers nice and big so that the fractions will all line up side to side, and that way I can tell what's a fraction and what's a whole number. If your handwriting gets a little sloppy, 
it's sometimes a little hard to tell if maybe you meant 71 fifths. So make sure that you're writing neatly and clearly. All right, now we're going to take a few where we're starting with our mixed number and going backwards. <clears throat> so we have two and one third. Now you can always draw out the fractions even if you don't have them at your house. So let's say I have two and one third. Well, I know I'm going to multiply these three thirds in each one. So I've got three thirds here, three thirds here. Oh, it's three times two. Three times two is six. So I'll have six pieces between the two of these, six thirds. And then I have this one little piece left over, adding the one. Six plus one equals seven thirds. You should notice the denominator will never change. It will never be different. So if this is thirds, then the improper fraction is thirds because I'm always using the same fractions. I'm using the same unit fractions, <coughs> excuse me, to build these things out of. So let's do two more and then I think you'll be ready to work on your own. I have five and one seventh. I'm going to take these five pieces. Each one is going to give me seven sevenths. So I take seven times five, and I'm going to get 35 pieces. Plus, I'm going to have one little piece left over that I'm going to add into my total. 35 plus one equals 36. I will have 36 pieces where each one is one seventh. So I will have 36 of these one seventh pieces. All right, one more and then you're on your way. So I have five and three eighths. Again, I have five and I know that I'll get eight eighths out of each one of these. It's going to be 8 taken 5 times, so I'm multiplying, and that's going to give me 40 pieces. That's a lot. But I still have 3 little pieces left, and so I'm going to add in my last little 3 pieces. Equals 43. I will end up with 43 little eighths pieces. So I will end up with 43 of these guys by cutting all of these up and adding the three in the end. All right, I think you are ready to go try a few on your own. If you wanna watch the video again, you are welcome to watch it as many times as you like. Have a wonderful day and enjoy doing some math.